So right here and right now, who are you? That's the question. That's the fundamental question. I mean, that's, that's the first question. All other questions and all other answers are built upon that that first question, who am I? And, and if we're really interested in, in truth, and if we're really interested in, in, in freedom and, and peace, then, you know, we have to be interested in this, this most fundamental of questions, who am I? Who am I? And if you ask that question, you know, who are you? If you go out into the street and you, you ask someone, who are you? What will probably happen is that they'll, they'll give you an answer. Uh, they'll tell you a story about their past and their future. You know, they'll tell you, oh, you know, my name is such and such and, and I'm 20 years old, 30 years old, 70 years old and this is where I live and this is what I do for a living and, and maybe if you get to know that person better, they'll start revealing more of the story. So they'll tell you about their relationships, about what's going wrong, what's going right, about how they feel. And if you get even more intimate with them, you know, they might really start revealing what they're actually experiencing in the moment. Um, but we want to get even more intimate. We, we, want, we want to get even closer. Because the, the, the question is, who are you now? Who are you now in this moment? Not who were you 20 years ago or last year or yesterday or even this morning. Uh, not who will you be uh, next year or tomorrow or in five minutes time. There's nothing wrong with those questions. But if we're really interested in truth, then the question becomes, who are you now? Who are you in this moment? Who are you in this moment? So we don't want to answer that question with concepts. We don't want a conceptual, uh, second-hand answer based on thought, based on memory. We, we don't want an answer to that question that, that is memory. We want a, a living answer. Because really that question, you know, it's, it's, it's a living question. It's a living, breathing question. Who are you now? Now, now, who are you now? So we want a, an answer that is alive. We don't want someone else's answer. We don't want assumptions. We don't want beliefs. We don't want uh, ideology and concepts. We want to we wanna discover the answer. We want to look for ourselves. We don't want a second-hand answer, we want a first-hand answer to that question. We want to look for ourselves right now. And this, re this really is the essence of meditation. I mean, that the question, who am I, goes right to the core of meditation. That's really what meditation is, um, is always inviting us back to. Who am I? Am I, <laughs> am I even the one who meditates? Am I the meditator? You know, who am I? Uh, who is the one living this life? Who is the one seeing right now? Who is the one hearing right now? Who is the one thinking right now? Uh, so we're always, in a million different ways, life is drawing us back to this basic question. Uh, who am I? You know, and especially, you know, in your life when, um, you know, in times of crisis, in times when things seem to go wrong, seem to go wrong. You know, like if you, you lose someone close to you, or someone leaves you, or you, you lose your job, or you lose your money. Often in that experience of loss, uh, and I wrote, I wrote about this recently on Facebook, um, in that experience of loss, what's actually happening is you're really beginning to contact that question, well, who am I? Who am I without the thing that I thought was mine? Or who am I without the person that I thought was mine? You know, it, it, um, you know if, if you were identified with something and then that something or that someone leaves or, or dies or moves away, then it leaves this great void. Well, who am I, actually, without that identification? Who am I? I, I thought I was this thing. I thought I was this person. But then now that, that, it, that went away, that, that, um, I lost that. So how, how could that really have been? who I am, you know, and then this can be the origin of great depression and anxiety and, and suffering, or we can really start to see it, you know, like everything in life is this giant invitation back to that basic question, who am I? So let's take a look right now. Instead of talking about it, um, let's, let's take a look right now.
let's just gently begin to notice what's actually here, what is actually present, what's, what's living here, what is living here where you are, what, what is alive here, you know, so we gently begin to notice this present moment dance of life, this a very alive dance that is happening right now, this spontaneous alive dance that's right here and right now. You know, so we just gently begin to notice, right now we begin to notice thoughts coming and going. You know, and, and when I say notice, um, there's no effort in this, there's not some special um, method or skill, there's, there's not, um, it's not how do I notice. You know, in a way this noticing is it's effortless, it's just, you know, is there right now some kind of noticing of thoughts? You know, can, are you aware of thoughts appearing, disappearing? You know, you start to notice this spontaneous play of thoughts. You start to notice thoughts appearing, images, pictures, you know, maybe a thought right now appearing that says this... Uh, this room is is beautiful, or a thought that says this room is is ugly, you know, a thought that says uh, this moment is good, this moment is bad. Maybe a, an image appears, you know, a memory of something that happened yesterday, or something that happened five minutes ago, or maybe a picture, an image appears right now of something that might happen tomorrow, or the image of you know what you're going to have for, <laughs> for dinner tonight or an image of something that might happen 20,000 years from now. That's okay, we're just noticing, we're, we're not, and this is crucial, we're not trying to get rid of thoughts, images, pictures, we're not trying to have different thoughts. We're not trying to um, have enlightened thoughts or have spiritual thoughts or have awakened thoughts. We're not trying to push thoughts away, we're not trying to make thoughts stay. This noticing, is, this noticing comes before all of that. It's, it's just, it's noticing, it's acknowledging. It's, in a way, it's honouring. It's beginning to honour all of the life that is actually appearing right now. It's honouring thoughts as they arrive and as they arise and dissolve. And then we, we turn to sensation. You know, that's also part of what we call this moment. It's funny, you know, we call it the present moment. As if it was something fixed and solid and static. As if it was something that wasn't alive. The present moment sounds so dead and fixed. It becomes the concept of the present moment. But when we gently turn our attention to what's actually here, we find there's nothing fixed or solid or static about it. It's, it's alive. So it's alive with thoughts popping out of nowhere. You know, you can't even know your next thought. You can't know your next thought. Um, and it's funny because we talk about the mind. We talk about mind, the mind, my mind, his mind, her mind. And yet, when we take a look into our present experience, we can't find something called a mind. You know, we find this spontaneous present dance of, of thought, present moment thought, you know, even a thought about yesterday is present, a thought about tomorrow is present, uh, a thought that says I'm present is present, a thought that says I'm not present is present. So what else is present? You know, and then we begin to notice sensation, all kinds of vibrantly alive, dancing, sensation. And it's funny again, we talk about the body my body, your body, his body, we talk about leaving the body and I'm in the body and out of the body and um, the death of the body. And yet, you know, right now when you think about the body, you conjure up the image of your body, you think about your body, what you end up getting is an image of, you know, a head, a torso, legs, arms, you know, and so it's an image of the body. You can think about your body when you were when you were young. It was a smaller body. <laughs> you can think about your body 
when you when you'll be older, you know. Uh, but all of that right now, those are images of the body. And the question is, what's your direct experience of the body right now? So that's the invitation to come back to. What's actually here? What do we find? We find this present moment dance of sensation, very alive, changing from one moment to the next, you know, tingling sensation everywhere in, in the in the in the tips of the toes, you know, in the legs and in the chest and in the back of the neck and even in the in the tongue at the back at the very back of the tongue. And always changing, moving. Sometimes the sensation can be quite intense, some kind of it can be soft and gentle. But we don't find something solid called a body. We find this present moment dance of sensation. So just like we don't find something solid called a mind, we don't find anything solid called a body. We find this dance of present thought and this dance of present sensation. So what else do we find in this moment? This, this moment this is rich. It's, you know, it's rich with um, thought and sensation and, and, and feeling. We also begin to notice feeling, what we call feeling or emotion. There's lots of different words for it. Um, and we begin to notice, just to gently begin to notice what's arising. So what you may notice in your experience right now, you know, you may notice a, um, a movement of uh, excitement, what you call excitement or, or, or fear. You may find fear or, you know, uh, sadness or boredom, you know, or frustration or joy. You might find great joy right now. And this is wonderful. Whatever is arising, whatever is arising right now, it's not a question of trying to get rid of it, push, it's not a question of pushing it away or trying to make it stay. It's about honouring what is arising right now. It's honouring what is arising right now because whatever is arising right now is life. It's life itself. It's life appearing as a thought, appearing as a sensation, appearing as a feeling. It's life appearing as sadness or fear or pain or joy or bliss. You know, it's all life. It's all a movement of life. Um, so it's about honouring the life that is moving here, in you, as you, through you, however you want to say it. Because what we'll see very soon is, is this, this idea of you, this idea of me. And we, we hang on to it. But really when we stop and look, is there anything fixed or solid here called a me? So this is why... Um, just noticing what's here is, is so fascinating and so um, powerful, actually. Because when you're noticing what's here, you're noticing thoughts arising and dissolving, you're noticing sensation arising and dissolving, you're noticing feeling arising and dissolving, you know, pain arises and dissolves, and joy arises and dissolves, excitement comes and goes. Bliss comes and goes. That, that's the nature of experience. There seems to be they have this quality of uh, coming and going, coming and going. Sounds, smells, uh, you know. So then the question becomes, and this is really what we're, what we're getting to now, the question then becomes, well, what doesn't come and go? What doesn't come and go?